Hey everybody, welcome back to the Sky Lounge podcast, episode number 329. Had to tweak the episode's title a little bit where initially I had put on here Sunday's day sun, early morning rambling and bumbling, howdy and sports ball. But since we're recording around what, 7 o'clock in the evening, Sunday's day sun, rambling and bumbling, howdy and sports ball. And it's curious, boys and girls... Because I thought today I'd have an early morning, you know, have a pretty decent, you know, productive day. And, you know, maybe take a walk outside and you know, enjoy my sports ball. But turns out, kind of got, <laughs> kinda got flipped uh, in a weird way. Didn't sleep throughout the evening. So, in a weird way, I saw the sun come up for the first time in, I don't know how long. And... Yeah, didn't really have the most productive day, and I'm not enjoying my sports ball at the moment because all my teams have lost on the day, and as I am recording this right now, the Vegas Golden Knights are taking on the Colorado Avalanche in the second round, game one, and they are losing pretty fucking badly to start the third period. If you know, boys and girls, you know. If you don't, I mean, you can look that shit up right now, or later if you want to, but whether it be later or not, you know, the past is always something to look back on and assess, right? Like how the Knights, you know, blew a 3-1 series lead, fought the Wild to Game 7, you know, won Game 7 at home, finally closed out a series at home, and now they're here in Game 1 of the second round, All right? You can look at all these things and assess and analyze how we got to where we are and you know that's what i've been doing with myself really over the last week and that happens when i get sick because i i hate being sick right i remember a couple days ago if i'm not mistaken episode number 328 did say that i was a bit under the weather and it got progressively worse <laughs> from that day forward, which kind of sucked. But I'm trying. I was trying to, you know, keep assessing and analyzing, you know, in, in the past few days before that, like what was going on. You know, was I getting enough sunlight? Uh, was I eating proper? Was I getting enough sleep? And sometimes, you know, minor miscalculations or weird hiccups here and there, or just strange variables that you think wouldn't be a fucking problem? Like, I don't know, having one sip of fucking beer and then just going kind of ham on the process shit, which, I mean, yeah, granted, that was kind of a, uh, I suppose, spur of the moment emotional uh, need on a, on a Sunday where I just kind of ate like crap. But all these things kind of culminate into... Just the body turned to shit. And not to mention the weather in Las Vegas has been really funky as of the last few weeks. Um, it's slowly but surely turning into more of our regular Las Vegas summer. Very hot, very warm. But it's been anything but a, a consistent pattern here in Las Vegas. There's been you know days where it's super humid but cool and then... Super humid but hot, and then other fucking weird combinations. So it's been really fucking up my body. But as of right now, I'm just about there at what, 95, 97%. And, you know, if you know your body, you know, how with often you get sick and whatnot, I mean, you should know where you're at, right? I mean, understanding and knowing your body is clearly important to, to do shit, right? I don't know what else to say. I mean, your body is very important. Just like how the fucking hockey players in this game right now, they're just, they're just fucking ramming their bodies against each other, just fucking throwing themselves back and forth. Angry motherfuckers right now. But kind of be angry at yourself when your body is a little, you know, unresponsive or, or a little bit dingy or, or not all that efficient or effective. And so it's left up to you to understand yourself, assess yourself, and give yourself that knowledge. But, you know, I mean, I'm not going to fucking claim that I'm a perfectionist, nor am I the expert in doing that for myself. But I try my best to, you know, 
get myself up, you know, to a certain level, to, to a certain recovery process, which isn't perfect by any means, again, but I want to get better at it each and every day, right? And, you know, even minor things like, oh, how did I get sick? What the fuck did I eat? You know, um, how much sunlight did I get? It's, it's little shit like that that it irritates me at, at that point where because I'm sick and whatnot, but it's one of those things where, like, the process of trying to, you know, understand myself and other things about myself, like, that's that's the kind of fun in it, which I guess is a really long fucking winded explanation of saying, yes, I was kind of sick, now I'm okay, and here's why I was kind of sick, I suppose, but yeah, I'm not dead. <laughs> like a 30-second explanation in five fucking stretched out minutes. That's what I do. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Yeah, yeah, pretty damn well. Just like this Colorado Avalanche team just fucking doing this hockey thing well. And yeah, as you notice, boys and girls, I am talking about the whole sickness and the body thing. I am missing some sports ball in here because I am watching the game live as we are talking and recording. But, yeah. You got to be in control of your body, man. You just got to, right? Otherwise, what? You're going to be one of those fat fucks, you know, downing pills recommended by doctors, a.k.a. professional drug dealers, every goddamn day to take whatever fucking pill to suppress your blood level down. And make sure you, you eat this uh, 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 derived supplement as separate uh, vitamins. So you don't get this from foods that you can naturally, you know, get. But no, 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 just listen to us. Oh, Christ. Right? Just don't listen to yourself. Don't listen to your own body. Just listen to everybody else except yourself. And I get it, man. I mean, there are certain things beyond your expertise, beyond your knowledge, that you can... And should ask about, certainly. But don't fucking tell me that when you do no due diligence in understanding how your body works, um, specifically your body, whether it be uh, your family history, um, you know, past history with, you know, food, other things like that, you know, what what can you do like right what what more can you learn about yourself like if you can get yourself in that mental space you, you can save a whole shit ton of money by not going to the fucking hospital right you don't have to go to your goddamn professional drug dealer and pour all that fucking money that you are you know slaving away for by the way kids all of you out there slaving away for don't fucking give it to goddamn doctors Spend the time to fucking learn about yourself, recovery, you know, nutrition, uh, body, all that shit. Because at the end, I mean, that's what it's all about, right? Self-preservation. Figuring shit out for yourself. And ultimately, you know, enjoying life. Not stuck in the fucking hospital listening to goddamn professional drug dealers give you all the fucking drugs and numb you the fuck out. And suppress your feelings, your body to all the natural goodness around you. Fuck out of here, man. You know what the doctor will never fucking tell you? I'm pretty sure certain doctors do. I don't fucking know. I'm not going to listen to no goddamn quack. But I'm pretty sure no one's going to fucking tell you get some sunlight. Because they're going to say, oh, sunlight gives you cancer. You can't get sunlight. You shouldn't eat meat. It's going to kill you. Now, fuck that. Get some sunlight. Walk around. Eat some meat. Don't turn vegan. You'll grow a fucking vagina. <laughs> Seriously, man, don't go vegan. That's the worst way to kill yourself. It really is. You're, what, you're uh, depleting the body of uh, precious nutrition nutrients that you need. You're completely barring that away from your body, and you're expecting yourself to sustain in a certain level of performance uh, throughout the day and whatnot just based on plants. You're fucking retarded. It's the same retards who are willing to just be sheeps and ass slaves to trends and other bad shepherds. I mean, there's no other way to say it. Like, really, false shepherds who are leading you to the slaughterhouse, yet you have no qualms with it. You have no problem with it just saying, oh, they're experts. They're okay. 
experts know what they they know about my body specifically. No, they fucking don't. That's a that's a generalization they're throwing at you. Stop it. Learn about yourself. Take time to learn about yourself, your body, and everything else, man. It's not that hard. The amount of effort to put in, yeah, sure, that's hard. But I mean, you, you know, making the knowledge yours, it's not. I mean, if you want to fucking put in the effort and knowledge, you, you, it's worth it. So do it, right? And again, kids, enjoy some fucking sunlight. Don't be an ass. I mean, hell, after I record this, hopefully with some sunlight left after I record this, I might just step outside. You know, grab a little bit more sun. More than I did earlier, because I have to walk and, you know, get the last bit of sunlight that I could throughout the day. A couple mile walk there. Always feels nice, you know, just walking outside, get some fresh air. Never used to be like that, kids. Never used to be like that where I say, oh, I like to go outside and enjoy the fresh air. Used to be just, uh, you know what, just stay home, stay doors, stay indoors, never leave, you know, blackout curtains, all that shit. But, you know, it's more like, eh, if I sleep, uh, darkness is good. But for the most part, if I'm awake, I prefer some sunlight, get some, get some energy in me. But shit changes sometimes, man. Right? Perspective, all these experiences, you know. A lot of times failures, right? That's how we get to, you know, learning things. But certainly it's not just about life, right? And it could certainly be about sports ball. And this is where I bring you, as a bitter Arsenal fan, trying to congratulate other teams on doing well, which I'm not really good at this shit, man. I'm really not. And because I'm not good at this shit, I got to open up a blunt here. Because... If I don't fucking put a goddamn blunt up, I'm going to sound like a passive-aggressive cunt. I already am passive-aggressive cunt, but I'm trying to mellow this shit out a little bit more, right? So, Chelsea beats Manchester City in the Champions League final 1-0 to win their second ever Champions League title all time. Congratulations, Chelsea. Uh, you motherfuckers make me fucking sick. But, eh, you know what? Good for you guys. You beat Manchester City, who... Man, Pep Guardiola... How the fuck have you not won a Champions League title with all the teams you've managed since Messi? Like, you haven't won since the Messi treble. Or was it the one after? I think he did it back-to-back, right? In Barca? But, again, that was with the fucking array of talents surrounding Pep Guardiola in uh, you know Barcelona. In the Catalans. But... Just awful stuff uh, if you're Manchester City. Yeah, you won the league. Yeah, you won the League Cup. But so what? So the fuck what? You do this every year. You win a League Cup every year. You somehow win the fucking Premier League just because you, you start bolting the fucking way through at least what, around January or February almost every year. But it's, it's the failures within the Champions League that really highlights... Manchester City and and really Pep Guardiola uh, as a manager, but you know all credit has to go to uh, Thomas Tuchel who who really took this fucking game and just owned it with Chelsea, you know. And it, it's so curious because this is a team that I always say it just feels like a mercenary club, and that's the whole to that. You know that's just my personal opinion. And maybe it has a lot to do with Robin Abramovich and, and just the way the ownership has been very suspect ever since his, uh, you know, interesting entry into England. But for Chelsea, yeah, I mean, this is massive. I mean, all these years of, you know, quote unquote mediocrity, right, for Chelsea's sense. All culminating to the young guys and the superstars gelling together. Kai Havertz with the goal there. You know, the superstar that you brought in. And it gelled. And now you're Champions League winner. Again, second time in your history. So massive stuff there. Kudos to Chelsea. Again, as an Arsenal fan, I fucking hate it. Uh, It's absolutely miserable. And, you know, it's... It's even worse when not just the Champions League, but the Europa League final is miserable too. Because you had Villarreal facing Manchester United. 
Unai Emery's Villarreal, to be specific, against Manchester United. And this game goes one all into injury time. And you so you play 120 fucking minutes of football. And then you go into penalties. Where it becomes a fucking marathon. 11-10 in favor of Villarreal. Where the only miss, the only missed penalty is by David De Gea. And what sucks is, what really sucks, I'm not even a United fan, but this really fucks up David De Gea's narrative. I truly believe David De Gea is still a really, really solid and good goaltender, goalkeeper. Watching hockey, so I tend to call them goaltenders at times. But being a good goalkeeper right now, with kind of a shaken confidence, it, it doesn't show out well, right? I mean, that kind of equivocates to him not being a good goaltender or a goal, good goalkeeper, kind of bad all around at times. But for me, seeing David De Gea miss the penalty like that, I would think mm, maybe this gives Manchester United a little bit more easier mind and, and I suppose... Less pressure when they try to deal him off or something. Because Henderson's been pretty damn good. And I would think that if United can figure out the David De Gea funk, if you can somehow kind of relax that out a little bit for him, should be good for Manchester United for moving forward. Of course, you still have some interesting, you know, uh, transfers you can work on and try to get on. But I definitely think that you would have to just, you would have to just try to, I don't know. I don't know. Try to recuperate David De Gea to do something and get something going. But Jesus Christ, man. United just losing like that to Villarreal. Felt pretty morbid. And I felt, man, if Arsenal just didn't shit the bed against Villarreal, we would have given the fucking Manchester United team a little bit better run for their money. But, hey, kudos to Villarreal. You know, they win a major cup, I believe for the first time uh, in their cup uh, club history. I could be mistaken on that, boys and girls. But Villarreal, huge win for them. I mean, that's just fantastic stuff. Shout out to Francis Coughlin who is in the Villarreal squad, former Arsenal player, curiously enough. But, yeah, for Unai Emery, I mean, he is a Europa League final legend. I, there is no other way to say it. I mean, he has won so many Europa League finals. He's been there so many times, too. Uh, lost with Arsenal. That's always curious. But <laughs> against Chelsea of all fucking teams. But, yeah, football just kind of... Shit on me like that within a five-day period. So, fun. Fun. But sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down, boys and girls. That's the nature of sports ball. And for certain teams, that down lasts for a long, 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 long time. But, hey, when the up is up, it's fucking great. And for Brentford, it has to be feeling really, really great where Brentford have beaten Swansea on winning promotion to the Premier League. So they are going to be up in the first division of football, English football, uh, for the first time in 74 years. So that is some amazing stuff there. And I think, you, obviously, you're going to have a very hard time with uh, all these other teams, all the squads, you know, facing... You just recently promoted, but hey, you never know with certain uh, certain clubs uh, getting promoted and how much of a noise and you know raucous they can create. I mean, remember Sheffield United a couple seasons back? They were pretty damn good, but now they're now they're kind of shit. I mean, they they just got fucking relegated. So yeah, hopefully Brentford doesn't have a very short season and you know can battle and duke it out. But yeah. Should be a good time in the Premier League next season. Hopefully for fucking Arsenal, they can, they can keep at that shit. Please, for the love of fucking God. 
All right? But, hey, man, domestic football is over. We're going to have some international football happening real soon. And, yeah, man, Euro 2020, KK 2021 Euros is going to be starting on June 11th, and I can't wait for that shit. But, yeah, man, football is going to be all around, and mm, it's going to be some delicious stuff, man. I'm going to be wearing mostly my Germany uh, my Germany jersey, probably my Iceland jersey once in a while, but mm, maybe, maybe pop the old uh, French jersey there, too. On a given day. But should be a great tourney. Should be a great tournament there. And let's see who the fucking best team is in Europe. All right? Best international squad in Europe. Hopefully it is Germany. Right? And hey, man, playoffs are going all, all around. I, I mean, come on. Euros aren't the playoffs, but it has certainly has that playoff environment here in the United States, right? But... In the U.S. right now, we got playoffs going on in the NBA and the NHL as I am right now watching some NHL action between the Vegas Golden Knights and the Colorado Avalanche. But before we get talking about that and a little bit more hockey, I want to talk about some basketball, NBA, right? The woke league of Chinese basketball. That's right, boys and girls. Playoffs are going on right now, and there is one series that is just embarrassingly done and i gotta say the miami heat getting swept by the uh, milwaukee buck that just feels like a just an ugly thing all around for miami now at the helm you do have pat riley who is an an, an ultimate competitor and i think he's gonna push the team to grab at something to get something to get aggressive in the offseason and you're gonna have to come back uh, getting better reloaded and See if you can face these top-heavy teams in the East. But for the Bucks, hey, you're finally getting past the first round. Um, hopefully you could do more stuff. And who the hell knows? Maybe Giannis can actually win a fucking championship this season. All yeah, right. We'll see, man. Should be a good time. Should be a great time, actually. But if you're a Lakers fan, it's not really a great time right now. Uh, the series is tied 2-2. Two to two. Between the Suns and the LA Lakers, and AD is injured, and he is going to be day to day, which fucking sucks. And you really don't know what this team is going to do at this point. Is LeBron James going to falter with this squad of role players and Alex Caruso? I don't know. I don't know. But all I know is the Lakers are tied 2-2. Two to two. They're going back to Phoenix for Game 5, right? Are they? Yeah. They should be. Should be 5. Yeah, 5, 6, 7. So, yeah, 5 in Phoenix, 7 in Phoenix, so 6 in L.A. So, you don't know what the hell's going to happen in the series. But honestly, man, I would tell you the Lakers are just going to falter i think i i feel like they might falter a little bit there uh, against the suns if ad is not healthy and you're asked you know to lebron james to fucking carry this team of role players i don't know i don't know what the hell's gonna happen honestly hopefully we win the series but uh, i i guess the hockey uh pessimism is just fucking seeping in right now, boys and girls, because I'm still watching this third period unfold right in front of me as I am recording with about 11 minutes left to go. And the Vegas Golden Knights are on a nine-minute penalty kill. Nine fucking minutes. I mean, the incident was kind of crazy. Reeves and Graves got into it a little bit. A little bit more traffic in the net in front of Grubauer. Everyone gets into a Petrangelo. All the guys on the abs just going ape shit. Marcia is also involved, of course. But right now, the game is 6-1 to one in favor of the Colorado Avalanche. And this game was just a fucking beatdown from the beginning. And 
I don't blame the Knights, but at the same time, I want them to fucking have more accountability and responsibility for this shit. Because the reality is, the Colorado Avalanche had a week off. The Vegas Golden Knights blew a 3-1 series lead. They were forced into a Game 7 at home. Right? They played three extra fucking games. Like, they played one week of extra fucking hockey. Unnecessarily. Because they're all goddamn mistakes. And now, after, what, barely a day and a half rest, you go into Denver, the Mile Holly City, and you're asked to face the best team in hockey, and you're just getting fucking spanked. It, it, is, it is a disaster tonight. But, you know what, man? That's very long. It's a very long series. Still game one. But if the boys don't pick it up, it's going to be a very fucking quick series. It's going to be a very fucking short series, and we might be going home in four. I don't want that shit, but who the hell knows? You never know in this fucking season, right? Well, hell, you never know in any goddamn season. Except maybe if you're the Toronto Maple Leafs. Jesus Christ. Toronto, what the hell is wrong with you? You, just like the Vegas Golden Knights, were up in the series 3-1. to one. Now, granted, different competition. Minnesota Wild, very different from Montreal Canadiens, but man, oh man, you are up 3-1 against the Canadiens, you blow game 5, you blow the hell out of game 6, and then you go ahead and, what, are forced into another game 7 where you're gonna, what, just piss yourself out? I mean, what do you do if you're Toronto, man? Do you figure some shit out where you say, okay, if we lose this, we got to trade a couple of players, key guys that I know are going to be, you know, highly favorable asset catchers, but it's almost like, man, what the fuck for? And we grew these guys. Like if you're trying to, like, for example, if you try to trade off a guy like Mitch Marner, you're only going to fuck yourself over. I, what do you fucking do at this point? Right? And hopefully go win game seven on Monday. I mean, that, that's what I hope for the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. I want them to win. I actually like the Toronto Maple Leafs. I don't really care for Montreal, except Carey Price. He's fucking awesome. He saved that goddamn game six in overtime. He's a beast. But, man, Toronto's got to figure their shit out, man. It's going to be fucking brutal for them moving forward if they can't win game seven on Monday, tomorrow. But round two. Other series are going on right now. Boston Bruins up 1-0 in the series against the New York Islanders. The Tampa Bay Lightning up 1-0 against the Carolina Hurricanes. And those are great series all around. And I haven't really gotten to watch a lot of it. But no matter who comes out of those series, it's just going to be a bloodbath no matter what. I mean, all these teams, uh, by the time you get to the set means... They're going to be meeting for the first time ever. And it's completely new dynamics. Uh, different fucking... Different fucking matchups from what we can ever get in any regular postseason. So, I would tell you, enjoy this time, boys and girls. This NHL postseason has been anything but normal, but it's it's great. Anything playoff hockey related is just beautiful, man. Some great stuff. Except, you know, you know, certain minor things like you know, player uh, safety, you know, consistent refereeing, you know, things like that. And I'm not going to be a bitch about, you know, the Vegas Golden Knights getting shafted by the refs. Far from that shit, man. I'm just talking about consistent refereeing on all fucking sides, all fucking teams. Right? But objectivity is never... Uh, Never a goal for everybody. It's not for it's my team or nobody else. But that's the nature of sports ball, baby. That's the nature of sports ball. And that's okay. And I'm done with that, boys and girls. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and end the episode like this right now because it's just turning into inconsistent rambling. I mean, I, the title kind of suggested that already. But between this... Kind of mediocre hockey game that the Vegas Golden Knights are pushing up. I mean, except for the fact that they are playing really fucking physical. They are just, just 
grinding at the teeth and just trying to, I don't know, like they're getting killed, but it's that moment in any kind of uh, anime where the big boss is just beating the shit out of the fucking protagonist. And the protagonist is on the brink of death, but the protagonist hasn't died yet and is still, you know, blinking his one eye, smiling and saying, I'm still going to kick your ass. And that's what the Vegas Golden Knights vibe feels like right now. And I think that's good. Like You absolutely need to have that. You need to not give up. And hell, boys and girls, that's just life. Don't give up. Enjoy some sunlight. Eat some meat. Take care of your body. Enjoy some entertainment like sports ball. So, until next time, kids. Fuck off. Yeah, fuck off. <laughs>